Hello everybody, and welcome back to Perfect Apocalypse, Patches Inferno. It's episode 2, and last time... Anyways, uh, what do we do now? We made the cake. Patches hands a brownie and finished cake. She puts a little flower on top for decoration. Like it? I found it outside. The cake is ruined. This cake looks awesome. <laughs> hey Patches, thanks for doing the heavy lifting. Uh, more hearts? It'd be really hard to do this on, with a, on a broken leg. Or some random dog-hating cat for, for a partner. You know, this dogs stick together, huh? I honestly can't even be bothered to tell the difference between cats and dogs. Doesn't make sense. Since you and Angel were... <laughs> I mean... It's not that you don't care who's a dog and who's a cat. Some cats are actually so cool. Brownie looks long longingly at Coco. Ugh, stop feeling things around me. Huh? What? No, I'm not. You can't back. <laughs> I also got a drink. <sighs> you have a thing for Coco, right? No! What? No! No! You're stupid! No! Don't be so loud. Who knows how the class would react if they found a, out a dog like a cat? Or how Coco would react? You wouldn't. I, I don't even like her. I swear, she's uh, too loud and full of herself. You're too loud and full of yourself. I know we're perfect for each other, okay? Patches, I know we're not exactly pals. But you know what it's like to like a cat, right? I just don't want to, like, scare her away. And she's been so stressed out about making sure everything goes well. I can't bother her with dumb feelings. So please don't tell anyone. Catch just shrugs. Thanks for listening, Vin. Can you grab Pico so she can grade our cake? Okie dokie. I mean, okay. Guess all is rubbing off on him. Okie dokie? Bill Mittens is diligently working on the vanilla cake. Are you here to bother me or is your cake actually done? Have you talked to Brownie much? I talked to her at the start of class. You were there. Yes, I mean, about something other than your precious mission to heal the dogs. But what is this about? Did you say something, something wrong? Is dissent spreading among the class? I'm certain dissent is brewing somewhere. But I'm talking about the big crush Brownie has on you. Brownie has a what? The entire class, including Brownie, looks in, Co looks in Coco and Patches' direction. Patches. Oopsie. Brownie jumps on Patches. You a hole, I told you not to tell anyone. <laughs> hey, stop, stop! Tell what? He didn't tell me anything. It's too late. Brownie is trying to choke Patches out. Well, this isn't looking too good. Guess cats and dogs really can't get along. Want us to get rid of your dog problem, Coco? Right, enough! Coco used her spoon to pry Brownie's paw off Patches' neck. Hey, look! I've got everybody except for Coco. Everybody likes me. Oh. For some reason... Brownie has the most like of me. You, outside, now. Yeah, Brownie, out. Not her, you! But I wasn't the one who insulted another student. I don't care. It's only first period and you're already wreaking havoc. What do you think Mitt and Whisk will think? They're going to see the dogs bloodthirsty pe pest. Dogs as bloodthirsty pests that need to be exterminated. Not that bad. I have a little dog. He's not little. Ugh. He's huge. Again, I was not the one who assaulted other nurse. Blah, 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 blah. And seeing dogs as pests to be exterminated, did you find it a little ironic that you're lecturing everyone on this? No. I've changed it. I'm trying to make up for everything by my by any means necessary. Kiko readies her wand. You should do the same. Or what? You'll kill me? I 
really strange I'm good cat now and I'd never hurt anyone ever again. I wonder what Olive would think if they saw you right now. Face it, you're a murderer just like me. They'll never change. This is not the right music for this. You're a killer. Do, 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 do. You'll never change. You're just like me. Do, do, do. You're sure getting a lot, sh getting shocked into silence a lot today, huh? I, I just want to be a good cat. Apologize. Ugh. I suppose it wasn't very productive of me to criminalize you for something you want to move on from. So, s sorry. What? She's trying to make me feel better? In a terribly half-assed, but still kind of nice way? We're past one minute. No, I was just saying what came to mind, as I do, as a lot of people do. I certainly just want to move on. I'm such a... to myself, it makes it hard to change my habits. Is that relatable to you at all? No. Why would it be? Pet, this is the... two of the worst voices I have. The, the smooth and manipulative guy, and then you have the... Whatever voice I'm doing for Coco. Horrible voices. Horrible. Patches, you <laughs> need to move on from being a total blood hungry asshole. You can't do that unless we allow you to. Or unless someone believes in you. We waved her wand. Patches' collar feels a little lighter. You realize they can go on a bloody rampage now, right? Guess I'll have to trust you that you won't. Got another one. Thanks for at least trying to make me feel better, Patches. Who and Patch Pat's Patches on the head. It's infuriating. Well, time to get back to class and do some damage control. Whoa, everyone's gathered around. Brownie's standing on the teacher's desk and juggling eggs. I'm into it. I'm digging it. Oh, Coco! Uh, Brownie fumbles the eggs. The class laughs, expecting... Especially the cats. This is hard when I'm at, on a crutch, okay? Brownie, what are you doing? I'm trying to show off what an adorably non lethal dog I am. Careful, Angel, she might maul you to death again. Urgh. I mean, it's not like he deserved it or anything, or something. Someone needs to take you behind the shed. Wow. Okay. Now you get into it. It's just racism. This game used to be about zombies and trying to survive patches, but now it's about racism? Incredible. Shut up, whiskers. Yeah. Nope, shut up, sit down. You don't have useful to say, you're just wasting everyone's time. I'm running. Thanks for trying at least. More than this fool's doing. Hey, thanks. Everyone, go back to baking. I'm doing when your cake is done and ready to be grated. Brownie stares at Coco and then back at the cake and then back at Coco. Hey, Patches, is your cake done? Yeah. It sure is. Awesome, let's see it. Oh, hey, hey, Coco. Uh, hey, how, how did the baking go? It went well. Patches didn't manage to stab me even once, to so that's a bonus. Is it awful that that's our standard for good behavior? You realize I can hear everything you say, right? Anyway, your cake looks super cute, especially the flowers on top. I don't expect anyone to be watching this to this point. Specifically because of Coco's voice. Which is also my voice. in my yard. Yeah, I figured you'd like them more that way. Yeah, I guess I can't argue with that logic. You get a passing grade. Woo -woo. Wanna try some? Alright, you go ahead. Yes, I'm waiting for all morning. So it's sweet mixed with the oily bacon? Well, I guess you can have caramelized bacon. I don't know. I don't know. 
I'm not really a bacon person. Right, it's too dry for me. I don't like really crispy bacon. I just don't. It's like it takes all the moisture out. It's like sweet, sweet bacon. It's so good. Can't believe you and Patches managed to make something edible at all. B hard, barely. It's barely. Let me continue stuffing your face. I oh, must be really good at it. Maybe I'll try some too. Who can taste the cake? Oh, it's way better than raw meat. Try some patches. Let them eat cake. Let's just eat some cake. Are we able to hide this text? Cuckoo and Brownie are super happy. <gasps> so I think I met Max Happiness with Brownie. And I think I met Max Happiness with Coco. That's good, that's good. I don't think I'll be seeing Coco again, though. I won't be seeing Coco again, so it's good I got Max Happiness. I guess that's that. See you at lunch. What, what voice did I give you? Ah, oh, you're so cool. But everyone in this class, I have like a good standing with. Have fun in the literature patches. Uh, have fun wasting away the hands of time. So, uh, Coco. I'm really sorry about everything. I know you're already stressed out, but I just... I didn't think Patches would go and tell you that we care about you a lot. You're super cool and smart and loud, but you're even allowed to ask for help sometimes. So let me know if you need anything. Duh. Sure. I guess your antics would help everyone get adjusted to being around dogs. Heck yeah. Oh. Does that mean we have four classes that we need to do? I already completed one. I'm just going to complete this entire game in this episode. It doesn't matter. Time to head to the library for literature class. Now that this collar's off, I might be able to start something have some fun. Hey, I saw you before. Patches! All of jumps onto patches. I'm so happy you're here. Remember when I met you in the library for the first time? How could I forget? You wouldn't stop talking about eating books and holding paws. I remember that. <laughs> it's pretty safe to say that that was the most awkward moment of my life. It's easy to please patches. Uh, it's easy to pe please Olive. Wow, can't believe you remember. That makes me so happy. Today's gonna be such a good day. Anyway. This nice dog Luna is helping start class. Let's go. Okay, so we have three more people. Oh, Angel. It's gonna be hard to please Angel. Uh, so the entire class is here now, Olive. I I don't know. We just kind of let everyone choose which classes to go to and when. Except Patches. Patches. Oh, I mean Angel. It's cute. It's the cute little cat. Say hi, Angel. Hi. I see. Total anarchy. I suppose I can work with this. First things first, attendance. Okay. But today's free for all. Why don't we? Why do we need attendance? Routine keeps up the mind sharp. And I also must ensure that I have a record of which literature club members attend the weekly club meeting. We already know Doug isn't here. Holly, please. Holly shuts up. Ahem. Doug. Absence. Holly. Present. Patches. Present. Olive. <laughs> Present. I'm not gonna be too loud. There are people outside of this room and I don't want them to know that I'm playing a furry game. Luna, present. Since when was Olive a member of the club? Holly, down. I'd like to welcome our newest member to the Liturgy Club, Olive. Oh, 
boy. I'm gonna collapse Angel lightly taps on his broken arm. Probably doesn't clap at all. Oh, could Angel join too? Oh. Well, Sparky did say that today was about establishing camaraderie between cats and dogs. And also mentioned that our lives depended on it. Welcoming a cat to this club would be a great step in the right direction. Everyone welcome our newest newest member to the literature club, Angel. Luna and Olive clap enthusiastically. Angel and Holly do not. Why why isn't Holly clapping? Holly seems like kinda of standoffish. I guess you don't have to clap. That's on me. Now then, Vice President Patches, what was this period going to consist of? Everyone must know. Oh, it's, it's, it is a quiet reading period. There are books on the shelves for you to read. Ah, oh, well done. You seem a little bit more shy than usual. No matter, everyone pick a book to read and feel free to chat amongst yourselves. Students began picking their books from the shelves. Cats seem to stay with cats and dogs with dogs. Well, there's only dogs here. The library door swings open. Ah, I'm late, I'm late! Oh dear. Oh, whiskers in the middle. Be so upset with me. The school's like, oh, it's so confusing and everything smells like dog. Oh, no, no, no. Ooh, new cat friends. Bye, dog! It's okay, it's okay. Olive slowly approaches Felix and lowers their voice. Yeah, I'll show you a nice, a nice quiet place you can read. Follow me. Olive leaves, leads Felix to another area of the library. Everyone else grabs a book and begins reading. There's got to be havoc to wreak here. I won't let you. Someone's playing music on the computer. The music's actually pretty nice. It'd be great to relax, study, or murder someone to cold in cold blood to these beats. Some sick beats. Last day was marked off in the calendar as October 25th. It is November 4th today. Dog ear. What? Oh, students who dog ear their books are true criminals here. Oh, you mean fold it? Yeah, I guess that's bad. Holly stares at an empty tabletop. What? Huh? Don't know how to read. What? I don't know how you mind your own business. You can read like Patches told us, or I'll maul you to death. Holly growls. Maul me to death. How can you do that without any arms? That was the only option I had. I'm not gonna, like, shame her for not having arms. Mm. How'd you know? Patches told me. Oh, that... I could have sworn I died with both arms intact. When I woke up as a zombie, they were gone. Sucks to suck. It sure does. That's a dig as well. I might be able to get my arms back. So I'll be on my best behavior. And for that means threatening a mo to maul a cat, correct? I didn't threaten you because you were a cat. I threatened you because you were an a-hole. I'm sure you can't see the difference anyway. Wow, okay. I feel like magic will solve all of my problems. Perhaps there's a book here that could help me. Okay, we've already got Holly on our side. This cart carries books that are ready to be reshelved. Furry Potter and the Deathly Howls. Just give me one second. I was praying. Lord of the Butterflies. Shih Tzu's Art of War. That's good. That's good. Shih Tzu, Art of War. Who named these? Patches eavesdrops on Luna con Luna's conversation with Angel. It's amazing that you made it out unscathed, Patches. And then established the help of a bunch of cats to heal us. I would never have expected this of you. Uh, it wasn't really my idea. 
It's all thanks to this cat named Coco. She really wanted to make up for her. I mean, she really wanted to help us out. Have sympa empathy. What well, a cat wanting to do something to have kindness to their heart? Are we warming up to the idea of working with cats for long, too long we've held out onto our prejudice? I'm certain both of our societies would benefit if we all worked together. You're a really open-minded dog, Luna. Oh, I try to be thank you. You, on the other hand, I heard that you were open to cats from the start. Okay, I gotta get these two to be on my side. But the only other two. But I don't think I'll be able to get Angel on my side. You'll finally notice Patches e eavesdropping. Ugh. Oh dear, I didn't mean to say that in any sort of judgmental tone. Just a lot of rumors that you were like cats a lot. I don't care who you like, though. In fact, I find it in in inviolable. Enviable. Inviable. That you came to the conclusion that cats are equals, no better nor worse, and were able to seek the relationship as a result. Patches stares at Angel and uh, back. I'm sorry, I must be saying all the wrong things right now. Oh, no, not at all. You're actually being very kind, I just wasn't expecting it. Phew, that's great to hear. They both have pretty much the same voice. It's like a softer version of how I normally speak. I'm going to pick out a book now. I told Olive I'd read them within this period. But how are they getting likes for me? Hmm. Sounds good patches. See you later. there, Angel. Is there any way I can help you feel at home in the school of dogs? I'm sure you must be pretty jarring for you. So that patch is, so the patch is character. I can't help but feel, but there's something off about him. Oh my, you're very perceptive. perceptive. I believe Patches has been lying about his true identity all along. Really? I, I mean... Hover. As much as I'd love to throw him under a literal bus, I'll and tell you he's indeed an imposter. Patches is definitely a dog, no one can mistake that. Huh? Of course he is. I just believe that in all my heart, years of knowing him, he's been putting himself up to be more arrogant and selfish than he really is. Oh. I hate to ask, but... You hate dog. He's a total fake. Agreed. He's not actually two-faced, egomanic, manic, cold, belinophile. He's actually a kind, misunderstood, and philo philosophic philinophile. These are big words. What? We've been in the literature club together for a few years now. I I'm not gonna stick with my with my answers. Heck no. Why would I stick with the answers that I've given? Way. If I get something wrong, I'm changing that. Alright? I believe experience of the apocalypse has been a literal and metaphorical rebirth for him. More of a literal, I would say. Great, it seems like everyone likes him more now, huh? Absolutely. I best be on my way, I have a lot of reading to do. I'll talk to you later, Angel. Excuses. This was a semester where homework eating was rampant. We had an assembly about it and everything. I'm pretty sure the main culprit was a certain corgi. <laughs> a book a day. A book a day keeps the cats away. Oh, wow! That's horribly racist. I like an impression to give cats. Fetch knowledge. This poster is very dog centric. Is that like a little dog right there? You got the eye, the nose, the head, and the ears. It truly is a dog stab dog world out there. Oh, and I gotta talk to you. Do not pee. I wasn't thinking about it. Is that blood? 
Okay, Angel. Angel's looking through some random books. I already have good terms. That just looks away. Angel continues flipping through the metamorphosis. Hello, kitty. Ah! The dog! I'm not a dog. I know I can sense that you're definitely a, d d a f filthy mutt. You realize Olive is standing right over there. Oh, well, I suppose they're fine from a distance. But you! I can sense it! You have a soul of a rabid dog on the hunt, like a beast in the moonlight. You will speak to me long no, no longer. Felix huddles behind a bookshelf, unwilling to talk. I'm amazed they got the blood out of this. Actually, it looks like they just turned it upside down. No wonder it smells so good in here. Oh. The poster reads, Have, encouraged you cow have courage, you cowardly dog. I love this poster. I feel like it was made for me. You respond well to insults, don't you? If it were up to me, signs like this would be put up everywhere. Hi, Patchy. Sorry I left you back there. I had to make sure our little Felix here was good and comfy. Comfy. First off, don't call me Patchy. Secondly, I hate how you throw yourself at any living thing, especially when they're so obviously hate dogs. But I, but, but, I made, I, maybe I can show Felix how nice dogs can be. Uh-huh. Why don't you pick out a book and come read it with me into the class ends? Felix doesn't like to feel the feel of the bing bag chair on his skin, so maybe we can use it. You know, snuggle up real close so we can fit it in it together? You really have one track mind, don't you, Olive? Wait, did I? Let me find a book, perhaps a mass murder manual or something like that. I don't know. I feel like a magic would solve my problems. Perhaps a book. Uh... Luna puts up this banner at, for every club meeting. Oh, he's accidentally knock over the stepping stool she'd use. Good times. No wonder she didn't like you. Holly looks like she'd fidget. She'd be fidgeting if she had any paws to fidget with. Wow, you're just mean. Oh, hello there, Angel. Is there any way I can help you feel it? Magic books? You know of any good non-fiction books about magic? You know, the sort where you might start an apocalypse or swap spirits between bodies? Some cat literature to make me feel at home. I see. Literature geared towards felines has unfortunately been cleaned out of this library. Because I'm an incorruptible leader and believe the erasure of knowledge to be a crime of the highest degree, I have a secret banned book collection. Not even the vice president of the literature club knows of such a collection. Secrets, Luna. Oh? Well, Patrick's never gave me an incentive to be completely transparent with him. Actually, I kind of felt as though he tried to sabotage me at any opportunity. I'd easily have my position revoked if anyone found out I had been hoarding illegal literature. But maybe you're right. Patches has been become a lot more trustworthy of late, so I'll try to keep less secrets from him from now on. Thanks for reminding me of, to keep my morals in check. It's surprisingly nice to talk to Angel. I've hardly said a thing. Look, can you just tell me where the magic cat books are? For educational purposes, of course. Oh, no can do. This is proprietary information. Why go through the trouble of mentioning this collection at all if you're not going to tell me where it is? I thought you just wanted to know if cat books existed in the library. You know, to feel more at home. Uh-huh. Sorry, I can't be more helped. This is, but a secret stash is a secret stash. I'd be reading, though. Are you ready to read? No, not quite. 
why I was looking for the perfect book. The problem. There are lots of books here. I bet you'll find exactly what you're looking for. is busy reading the father the fetcher of the rye hmm. there's nothing interesting in the, on the halls I might as well stay here and plot my revenge okay go read like patches told us or I'll maul you to death magic books I just want to know where I can find some feline reading material while they are of the occult variety. Lena told me that she had a collection somewhere in the library. Ah, she told you that! It's supposed to be a secret. Do you, so you know where it is? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Why should I tell you? Maybe we can come to an agreement here. You tell me where Luna's collection is and I'll help you with whatever you need. Given you have no arms at all. I guess today is supposed to be a lot of collaboration between cats and dogs. Find me Shih Tzu Art of War and I'll consider telling you where Luna books are. Deal? I know exactly where that is. Careful, Holly. Your power complex is showing. Book about warfare written from the point of view of Shih Tzu, an ancient canine military strategist. Or is great and all, but I don't want to murder if it requires teamwork. Nah, uh, collaborative murdering. Wait, well, you actually got the book! Pat just throws the book on the table closed. Wow. Jeez, thanks. My payment. The books are hidden in the podium underneath the globe. I saw Luna hiding her cat girl comic stare and giggling to herself like she was some kind of genius. If she saw me staring, she begged me not to tell anyone. Yes, you sniffed it out. I mean, cats do that, right? I wouldn't know. There we go. I just looked behind the podium underneath the globe. The shelves spill into the back. They're full of books like Where's Ragdoll and Hachiko Mew Mew. One book stands out. As if leather bound, ornate, decorated. I don't typically judge a book by its cover, but I'd say it's guaranteed that it's going to be a deadly read. I just flips through the book. Part of it is in dog, doglish. Most is written using a strange script made of claw marks. Nothing's ever straightforward, is it? I need a cat to translate this for me. Translate. <laughs> is that the family grimoire? This. It just shows off a heavy tomb. Tome. Yes. Amazing. Finally, something that doesn't smell like dog. Look, sniffs the book. He sniffs patches too, for good measure. Yes, stop. My dear, it appears you are a cat. Apologies, I'm just on edge because all these dogs. Did you see that poster about eating their homework? About absolute savages. With the exception of that pinkish dog. Quite considerate they are. Anyway, fellow feline, is there something else I can do for you? It appears I'm in need of a translator. Perhaps you could help me. I just hands over the grimoire. A uh, cat who can't read cat scratch? I'm just a little rusty is all. Mm, fair, I suppose not all cats are distinguished for academia. Patches imagines dissecting Felix and pulling out his all his organs while he's still uncon uh, still conscious. I suddenly feel a presence with an aura like a violent wolf. Felix's eyes dart around. I must be at my hallucinations. I mean, translating an entire book requires a lot of effort. You'd be more willing to help if you did something for me in return. Find a book? I could help you find a book. Would you? If you're a red wears ragdoll. I mean, have you ever he heard... It's more of an illustrative book, but it's very meditative to flip through. He likes an adventure in another world, and the art is, is genius. If 
Yeah, the iconic Ragdoll's character design is... Stop talking. I'll find you the book. Hutchins walks away without another word. Oh, he's so nice. Mm -mm. I need to get Angel to like me, though. Hutchins rummages to the bookshelf hidden in the back of the podium. There it is. Where's Ragdoll? Ugh. This is a weak paperback book for kittens. Uh, who here isn't destined for academia? I found Ragdoll. Patches throws the book at Felix's chest. Thank you so much. Oh my, oh my, what a beautiful book. It's in mink edition. Now then, about the grimoire. Oh yes, I finished translating some interesting sections while you were gone. Oops. Th this is no ordinary book. It is Claret Family Grimoire. And debaucherous family of cats and dogs. Claret. I'm pretty sure that's Ginger's family name. Really like a morality meant there were no no limits to what they could learn and what they could do. Jumping through entire villages, killing and reviving in order to create a perfectly obedient undead army. The army would never would over time rot away as the family lacked a bloodline pure enough to conjure the life shattering and life giving essence of Bapomets. Bapomets? Yes, the Almighty ruler of Inferno. You can read all about them and more in the sections I've translated. I even color coded everything. Riveting. You won't regret this, Felix. Hi, Patches. Ready to read? Yeah. If I found a perfect book, actually. Oh, it looks so spooky. Now we just need to wait for Angel. Angel's joining us? Yeah, did I forget to say that? Olive. And Patches. There you are. The three of us are gonna to read together. Maybe it's been a while since you two have last read. Here, I'll show you. Olive flops down in the middle of the big beanbag chair. There's hardly any room for all three of them. They pat the available seats of the beanbag anyway. Whatever. That just sits. Actually, I'm going to read with Luna. That's not his voice. You two have fun. Don't worry, I'll get that back. Who needs that fool anyway? He's uncomfortable reading with us. It's his own fault. Yeah. Maybe I was too pushy when I told him I wanted you two to make up. Huh? Make up? Would anyone want that? I just think being angry isn't very fun. But there'd be other days for you two to talk. For, for now, let's just relax and read. Of cracks open the book, Buddy in the Chocolate Factory. Meanwhile, Patches begins reading the translated segments of the Grimoire. Bell rings, marking the end of the second period. Have you enjoyed that book, Alex? Is that what they said? Thanks for the books. Shh. Were you for not opening it for me? Thank you all for allowing me to host the literature club meeting during our class hours. I hope to see you at lunch. Bye, everyone. I'm headed to the cafeteria, Olive. See you there. Oh, what a great class, right, Patchy? Don't call me that. It's bad Angel couldn't read with us. I, I guess we'll see him at lunch. Let's go. Okay, no. That's just... After locking the door, after locking the door to the library, Olive scampers off to the cafeteria while yelling, "Snack, snack, snacks!" Better follow them. Okay. There's not much left to do. I'm taking attendance for everything. If I hear that you're skipping, I'll literally kill you. Okay. for lunch actually I'm gonna end this episode here thank you guys so much for watching this episode if you enjoyed it please like button comment below subscribe me here be sure to ring the notification bell to be notified when we're videos it helps a lot and yeah I will see you guys 
in a next episode. Love you guys. Bye!